It's just old Larry. In the morning, got the kids to school, back in town, sunny Nashville, Tennessee. Although, when we opened the door this morning, my son Marshall said, Dad, it's cold outside. We are so excited that fall is finally here, seemingly. And uh, this is a family that lives for the fall, as I've mentioned many times. And I'm so glad to be home. Oh, Lord. I've just been, as you well know, doing lots and lots of traveling lately and uh, playing lots of gigs. But things are, I'm not going to say winding down, but getting chill for the rest of the year. Um, only a few more Ann Wilson gigs left. We're doing a couple ZZ Top, Jeff Beck things. When is that? That's coming up uh, a couple weeks. And then uh, I've been, yesterday and today I'm working on this crazy gig. It's like long days. Uh, it's like a thing for CMT, the Country Music Channel, honoring Vince Gill um, called Giants. I'm in the house band with a bunch of my dear, dear friends that I love to pieces backing up Vince and a bunch of uh, people that are honoring him doing his songs. I think there's like Chris Stapleton, Carrie Underwood, Wendy Moten, all these amazing singers. And uh, the house band is me. I'm standing right next to Jed Hughes, my old mate, uh, Paul Franklin on the steel, Jimmy Slos on the bass. Sweet Billy Thomas on the drums, John Jarvis, my 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 guru, piano player. Oh man, there's a, there's a few other folks. It's it is a lovely band, and we're having a great time. And uh, I I got some cool video of us jamming a little bit with uh, you know Chris Stapleton and and all that. And uh, I can't really put it up yet because the show's not aired yet. But after the show airs, I'll put up this cool little rehearsal jam but I wanted to tell you guys about uh, uh, you know this, these last couple videos I put up this, the, all this crazy stuff with the Jim Mercy band thanks for all the kind words about that man those, those are crazy gigs as you can as you can tell by the videos but you know the last one we just did in India at the at the Colt Stadium you know um, uh, we didn't have a babysitter because my wife was also my ex-wife was also out of town, so uh, I had to take the boys with me to that crazy gig in Indy. And uh, you know, normally we, Jim is kind enough to fly us uh, down to those gigs on on one of his many planes, you know, that he owns for the Colts. And uh, but when I realized I had to take my boys, I thought, I thought, well, you know, I can't get them on the plane, so I'm I'm just going to drive the four hours to Indy. So I told everybody, you know. I'm, don't worry about me, I'll just drive. And, and, and Mike Wanchik said, hey man, you might be able to get him on the plane if you if you ask Jimmy. And so I was, I, I asked Ursay if, uh, if I could get him on the plane with me, which is a lot to ask, because you know how expensive those private flights are. And um, he was so gracious and kind enough to, he said, yeah, one time offer, you can put the boys on the plane with you. So when I told them, I picked them up from school and I said, uh, boys, guess what? We're going to Indy, and you get to, uh, you, I'm going to stop that right there. You get to fly on, uh, on, on a private plane for their first time in their life, and they were so excited. Oh, my God. They kept saying, oh, my God, we get to fly on a private plane. I was super excited for them. Because any, any of you guys out there that have ever flown private, it is, boy, it is, it is definitely a step up from, from being stuck in a middle seat on Delta. You know, uh, it kind of spoils you forever once you do that one time. You know, you you, you never want to fly commercial again. Yeah, but you know that that's for rich folks. You know, that's it's a for guys like us. It's a uh, it's a rare and and very uh, welcome respite from the madness of normal commercial flying. But Man, we had such a ball. This little trip that I took them on was the greatest family trip that I've ever been on with them. We had this, they had so much fun on the, on the flight. And uh, we had this great hotel that Jimmy was kind enough to put us up in. And uh, man, there was a, they had this beautiful pool basically all to themselves. 
my God, we had a great time. And the gig was super fun. And uh, all the guys in the band <clears throat> were super sweet to my kids, man. And um, it was it really meant a lot to me that they were all so cool. Everybody was very welcoming of having them around. And, you know, I got to admit, my kids are pretty awesome. <laughs> They're they're not they're not hard to love, you know. So, uh, but man, uh, Danny Nucci, the guy that was in the video, the actor who was in Titanic. See, they loved Danny Nucci before they ever even met him because they've seen Titanic a million times. So when they found out that I was in a band with Danny Nucci, they were like, "You know that guy?" So uh, we, you know, we had a ball. And Danny is like their new their new Uncle Danny. So we hung out with them a lot, and it was really fun. But I, like. You know, that gig, you know, you never know who you're going to meet on one of those Jimmy Ursay gigs. I mean, he brings in all these amazing people. I mean, um, it's really, really fun to, to be around. Like, on this last one, we had Ann Wilson and Buddy Guy, John Hyatt. And uh, so, you know, Buddy Guy is still killing it. 86 years old is just still amazing. Um When we were getting ready to go back from the hotel to the airport to go back home, there was a couple shuttle buses sitting out there for us, and uh, <clears throat> you know, one of them didn't have any, hardly anybody on it. So me and the boys jumped on there with Kenny Ernoff, and we're all sitting there, you know, waiting to go. And, and right at the last minute, before we're about to take off to go to the airport, Buddy Guy and his, and his two guys that helped him out jumped on. So we're sitting there for thirty minutes on this shuttle ride, right there, me and Buddy Guy and Kenny Ernoff and my kids, and we had a beautiful chat, Buddy is the coolest guy. I mean, he is so with it. I mean, it's such an inspiration to, to see a fellow that's that age that is like younger and hipper than most 30 year olds, man. He, his hearing is amazing. You don't have to yell at him. He, like he hears everything you say. And he, uh, we had a great little chat. I was asking him about, you know, the old days about like what it was like when all those, you know, early club gigs, you know, when, when all the managers were trying to screw everybody out of their money and stuff. And, and he told us some amazing stories about the old days, about, <clears throat> you know, how rough that scene used to be, like where people were stealing money from you, you know, like all those black cats that were doing those amazing gigs, all the managers were all stealing all their money. And uh, he had to figure out a way to, to navigate through all that. And it was really interesting what he was saying. Um, man, if there was ever a moment, I wish I had a video rolling. You guys would have loved it. <clears throat> but, man, all that to say, Buddy buddy Guy is the coolest, man. He is just a super, super sweet, very friendly, very cool person. And uh, also, so is John Hyatt, man. John, We rode on the plane home with John, and, uh, man, he's a lovely guy, too. Just a beautiful guy. Very, very humble, sweet, sweet guy. Man, just these gigs are fun because you just never know what you're going to run into. Um Man, what can I show you today? Uh, uh, I got my old Silvertone. I just got this back from the shop. You know, I've owned piles of these things over the years. I love these guitars. These these were all made by Harmony, right? They're called uh, Stratotones. But if it says Silvertone on it, it's just a rebranded Harmony that was sold out of the Sears catalog. <clears throat> the Sears Silvertone designation of this guitar, I think, is model 14. 23 it's either 1423 or 1432 i can never remember <clears throat> but um you know in the harmony book it's called the stratotone stratotone jupiter and uh these are as i've said many times when, when i went through my pawn shop guitar phase many years ago where i was where i was buying every tysco k um you know every uh harmony every Supro national I could find. I really wanted to learn about, you know, every guitar player goes through that phase, I say, like uh, where you want to play all those um, crazy, you know, Rockets and Bobcats. And I always thought that of all those guitars, these were the best sounding um, of all those old junky, you know, pawn shop guitars. The pickups on these Jupiters are really good. They'll keep up with any guitar. They're, they're as loud as anything else. And they sound amazing. <clears throat> They're great with flat wounds and round wounds. 
And all you got to do to these guitars is put a real bridge on them. I always take them to Nick Druschel at Glazer Instruments and have them put like a wood bass tunematic on there. See, the, the way that these are wired <clears throat> from the factory, um, it's, it's pretty, it looks like a lot of knobs, and it is, but it's a three-way switch. <clears throat> and in the middle, see, you got volume, tone for the neck pickup, volume, tone for the bridge pickup, which is just like a Les Paul. But this, this switch right, or this knob right here is a blender. So when you go to the middle, it, it's a, it, it sweeps through the whole frequency spectrum of these two pickups in and out of phase. It's really cool, like squawky, like a wah pedal sort of built in. A lot of people disconnect that um, on these guitars and they just make it like a master volume, which is what somebody did to this one. I bought this from 30th Street Guitars when I was there. Remember that video I did where I was at 30th Street Guitars in New York? I bought this from them. But it's a cool guitar, and uh, if you ever find one of these, you know, they go for about 1500 bucks. You should definitely buy it, because these are really good. The natural finish one, I like. I've got, I've got one or two of those, and I really like those guitars a lot. So, let me show you a cool lick or something. I'll show you a lick so these videos aren't a total waste of time. Uh... Let's see, what was I thinking about the other day? Uh, okay. Think about, um, think about a, a G minor chord, right? took that chord, kept the middle four notes of it, and then used open E's on both ends of it. It's like the nastiest G minor six chord you could ever play, right? Now, you understand what a G minor six is, right? It's a, it's a bluesy pentatonic blues chord. But when they say minor six, you gotta add that E note to the to the thing to make it, that's what makes it the six. Okay, one of my favorite nasty James Bondish sort of moments is, is like any minor six chord. The six is my favorite note to really you know, explore on any kind of crazy blues like that. Like if you got. And if you look at a, if you look at a G minor six laid out like that. G, B flat, and E, those are the same notes as what? They're the same notes as a C dominant seven. So if you play it here, you look at these notes, same as a, as a C, major, C dominant seven. So there's a, a lot of uh, similarities between that G minor 6 and that 4 dominant 7 chord. So that stuff's all married together in my mind. Like, Thank you.
that's your chord for today, G minor six. Thanks for watching, guys. Hope you're doing great out there. I'll see you real soon, okay? Bye-bye.